You wanna know what's scary? Discrot. You wanna know what's even scarier? We can't do anything about it. So basically, the way that a DVD is constructed is it's two pieces of plastic and sandwiched in between is a thin layer of aluminum, a special kind that houses all the information on that disc. So that shiny, nice, reflective layer is that aluminum. And so disc rot occurs when that layer erodes. The data is lost, the disc is unplayable, and I'm sure it's happened to you. I've heard it happens incredibly frequently with older GameCube games. There's a Metal Gear Solid game that I know is very susceptible to disc rot. Now I know that this is very scary. It's scary to me, I'm scared. But there are two ways that disc rot comes about. The first is through shoddy manufacturing. Now, it's no secret that these discs are produced on a massive scale. They have to meet supply and demand, so they're making thousands upon thousands per batch. And sometimes a batch slips through the cracks that isn't the most well-constructed set of discs. Sometimes the glue that they use is not the highest quality. Sometimes there's a little gap. Now, as I understand it, the two main places that disc rot can occur through a manufacturing error is around the side of the disc and inside the ring in the center. And that's usually caused when the adhesive does not keep that seal tight. It's supposed to keep air out. When it comes to faulty manufactured discs, air is the enemy, water is the enemy, anything that can corrode this little aluminum layer of information. But disc rot isn't exclusively limited to that data layer being completely compromised. Sometimes a disc can just yellow, it's called bronzing. Not too far back, there was a string of Blu-rays and DVDs released through the Criterion Collection that, through some manufacturing error, experienced massive bronzing. Now fortunately, the Criterion Collection as a company were very accommodating to people who had experienced this through their products and sent them replacement discs. But it can happen. Mostly you'll see it on old CDs, CDRs. This is another form of disc rot. Now the second way that disc rot can occur is on our part. Sometimes you get a fantastic disc. No problems whatsoever. You take it out of the case, mwah, pristine condition. Now let's say you lend your disc to a friend and they're a little less careful than you are. In fact, a lot less careful. They're getting liquids on it, exposing it to direct sunlight, just leaving the discs around to be scratched. Those are things that can lead to disc rot on our end. So basically, what you wanna do is you wanna take care of your discs. Keep them in a climate controlled area, usually about uh, 60 to, I heard 80 degrees is about that sweet spot. Try and keep them away from as much humidity as possible. Keep them out of direct sunlight. Don't get any scratches on them. DVDs are more susceptible to disc rot from scratches than Blu-rays are. Blu-rays are a higher caliber quality of disc. And from what I've heard, the chances of a Blu-ray experiencing disc rot is significantly slimmer than a DVD or even CDs or CDRs. Now the great thing about Blu-rays is that they're so scratch resistant. That's one of the things that's like the main draw for me for Blu-rays. They're scratch resistant, higher quality, better sound, more storage space for bonus features. That's why I love the Blu-ray disc. But that scratch resistant also helps deter from disc rot. Even the slightest scratch can compromise the protective seal, that plastic layer on either the front or the bottom. Sometimes you can get it on the label end, sometimes you can get it on the reflective side. And if you get a scratch on there, that could compromise your disc. And it's scary, especially with stuff that's out of print. Now I have a couple of out of print discs. I have a couple of the Walt Disney Treasures discs, uh, notably the uh, Your Host Walt Disney one, which currently retails for about 80 to 120 ish dollars on eBay. When I went to college, a lot of my discs were just put in the garage. Now I live in Florida, and Florida gets hot. So you can imagine how hot that garage was. It's not air conditioned at all, it's not climate controlled. Now when I got a lot of those discs back from my mom, a lot of those discs I feared were going to exhibit signs of disc rot. And I thought I was in the clear, until I decided to pop in my copy of Sword in the Stone, which I've had since maybe I was about 11, 12 years old. It wouldn't play. So I look on the bottom, disc rot. There's nothing I can do. There's no repairing it, there's no way to make it stop. You cannot play these discs anymore. In fact, that's the main reason why I caved and bought the really awful transfer of Sword in the Stone on Blu-ray. Now, disc rot doesn't have to be as major as I just showed you on that Sword in the Stone disc. Here's the ceiling around the inner circle for the Your Host Walt Disney. This is disc one. Okay, well, this is just in the inner ring, so the majority of the data should be preserved, right? Wrong. Okay, I'll just rip the disc onto my desktop. That way I can have that in case this disc craps out. I couldn't get any further than six minutes into the ripping process before it decided to stop. 
and so I decided to play it in my PS4. I couldn't get six minutes in without the disc skipping an entire segment. Now, Disney currently has no plans to re-release these Walt Disney Treasures on a Blu-ray format. Fortunately, a majority of the material found on that Your Host Walt Disney disc can be found on YouTube, so that's great for me if I want to go and watch them. But I can no longer, unless I shell out the money, watch that on DVD. And it's a shame, because I fancy myself as a film preservationist. I love being able to see films that might have just been lost to time. It's important to preserve film. Film is our history. Disc rot is not incredibly common. In my 10 plus years of DVD and Blu-ray collecting, I've only experienced disc rot a total of two times. But that doesn't stop me from worrying about my collection. So far, I haven't heard much regarding 4K discs, the 4K Ultra HD. I don't know anything about disc rot for those because that is a relatively new format. It could happen to 4K discs. It will happen to Blu-rays. It will happen to DVDs. It happens to CDs. It happens to older disc-based games. And while it sucks that maybe one day, maybe 20 years from now, 50 years from now, I heard if you take care of your discs properly, they can last you a lifetime. But one day, all of this will be worth nothing. But it's important to remember that you're not collecting for the value. You shouldn't be collecting for the value. If you can pass these things on to your kids, your grandkids, great. That's an added bonus, but do it for yourself. Do it because you love film. Do it because you love the thrill of the hunt. Do it because you genuinely care about film preservation. Do it because you want to show big studios that you will buy their older catalogs, that you will buy the physical releases. But the most frightening thing of all about this disc rot thing is that it reminds us that nothing is forever. Discs. Life. The sun. The universe. Well, see you next time.